All right, everybody, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to be talking about some more Yngwie Malmsteen Stratocasters. So we're looking at this one over here, which is the USA Custom Shop versus this one over here, which is the USA Current Standard Production. This one is a 2014. This one is a 2020, uh, but they're still the same specs as the current models, right? So uh, this video, I know there's another video out there, but if you don't want to spend an hour watching that thing uh, and hearing a whole bunch of crazy stuff, you can listen here and uh, hear about these two guitars, right? So we'll go ahead and start off with the standard production model, which is based on extremely early 70s as far as uh, what Yngwie says. Based on the features, you know it's true. Let's Let's check it out. So this one I recently had signed by Yngwie. And as I've said, it's my favorite overall, as far as the production models go. Uh, just overall quality, uh, fit finish of everything. Uh, you know, maybe I got lucky with some of the grain on the wood because it's got some real nice grain, etc., etc. You know, this one's a 2014, and I've had it for many years. I bought it new. I'm pretty sure I got it from Sweetwater, if I remember correctly, and been loving it ever since. It's always on my guitar rack just because of the features, how it plays, how well it's made, etc. This is a big factor is these big old deep scallops, right? It's got the biggest scallops. It's got the biggest frets. So, you know, you're not going to be touching that that wood unless you really, really, really try, right? Uh, other cool features, obviously it's got the bullet. So if you love that bullet, you got to have the regular production model. Because uh, the custom shop doesn't have that. You know, it's got the, the traditional shallower type tuners. Got the regular old skunk stripe, etc. Other than that, you know, it, it's pretty similar to the previous couple of models. Just a few little feature differences, right? How does it differ from the custom shop? Like I said, up here, you know, you've got the bullet. Custom shop doesn't have the bullet. They both have the, um, the brass nut, obviously. They both have the same type of tuners. You know, headstock, neck shapes are pretty much the same. Maybe a tad bit thinner on the custom shop. Not much. You probably won't even notice it. Single string tree, you know, instead of the later 70s ones that had the two string trees, right? Both are going to have those big old freaking frets. Uh, scallop, scallops are different though, right? So before we move on from the neck, let's take a look at the U.S. custom shop. So U.S. Custom Shop, here we go. Boom. So first thing you notice, no bullet, right? And this one, same thing. I don't know if I got lucky, but I found one that had some really nice grain. Flip it over. You see it still has uh, the same type of tuners. And these work really well for me. Some people say they don't, and they replace them with locking tuners. I've, I've never had to do that. You know, as long as you get the string down in there in that hole, and then you get a couple of windings on it, it's usually pretty solid. And if, if that's not solid enough for you, then uh, try the string wrap over method to where you put it down in the hole and then you wrap the string under there and then back over and then you wind it around and it's just as good as locking tuners. It looks kind of weird because you can see it poking out, but uh, it's not bad. Anyway, back to this guitar. So if you look carefully right here, you'll see that little line right there. What is that? That's the maple cap fretboard. So this one has a maple cap, which means that the fretboard is a separate piece of wood from the neck wood, right? So if you look on the back, no skunk stripe. That's pretty cool. It's different, right? Uh, what else does that mean? Well, it doesn't have a bullet up here, so you have to be prepared to adjust your neck down here, right here on the bottom. So you can't really get to that with the screwdriver as it is. Uh, my best method so far has been pull off the plate, remove the, spr the springs from the bridge. That way, you know, your bridge kind of goes up and gives you a little room to work, pull out all your screws, and then you should be able to pull that back just enough to have access to that. So you got to do that, make your adjustment, hope that it's right, and then put everything back together, put, pull your springs or put your springs back in, uh, get it up to tune, give it a little bit, and see where it's at. And if it's not good, then you got to do it over again. So much more difficult than just getting an Allen key and going boop right here at the top, right? So uh, that that is probably the biggest difference between these two. But if you like it without that, then you got to get yourself a custom shop. Uh, the custom shop neck is nitro finished, and it is noticeably smoother than the production model. 
uh, which is poly, right? Uh, poly's thicker. Nitro is very, very thin. If any of you have worked with nitro, which I have, I've built uh, uh, one guitar and finished it in nitro, and I refinished a different guitar in nitro with the help of a local master luthier, uh, Gary Garcia. And if you know about nitro, basically you spray it on and then you sand most of it off. And then you sand, or you spray more on, and then you sand most of that one off. And you keep doing it um, until you get, you know, where, where you want to be. You know, I know one guitar, we probably put about half a gallon of nitro on it. Uh, other differences, obviously, you've got the custom shop logo right here on the back of the headstock, whereas the other one has the serial number on the back of the headstock. Serial number on these is right here on the neck plate, so that's a little bit different. Now we'll move on to the body. So you can see this one has the flush fit uh, strap locks, which are kind of cool. It's cool and it's not cool all at the same time, right? That means you have to have the other part of this, otherwise you can't use a regular strap on there. And when you set it down, you know, you don't really have any wiggle room there because there's almost nothing to set it on, see? So like I said, good and bad. I like it because it looks cool, it's new and it's different. Other than that, um, the strap stays on really well. I've never had one pop off, not even one time, right? And uh, I don't think I've seen, you know, when I went and saw Ingve recently, his, his didn't pop off either, and he's doing all kinds of crazy stuff, flinging this stuff around. You know, one thing, and I don't know if all the custom shops are like this, but, you know, look at those freaking cool-ass grain patterns. And this one is uh, flat sawn. You know, some of this in here kind of looks like it could be quarter sawn, just because it's got such good looking great pat grain patterns in there. Um, and I mean, even on, look at that on the side of the headstock. So they probably have a little bit better choice of woods, right, from uh, the custom shop than they would from the production line. Uh, now let's move on to the body. So, well, actually, no, we didn't look at the frets. So look at these frets and actually, let me, uh, let me put these, I'll put this one right here, just so you can get a better idea. And there's a little bit of shadowing going on, so let me move this camera over. See if we can't get a good glimpse here. So you can see the difference in the scallops here, and I know that's probably not the most ideal angle, but you can see, you know, you've got a bit deeper scallops uh, on the production model versus uh, the custom shop. Also, you know, and I haven't cleaned my frets in a long time, so keep that in mind, but the frets on the on the custom shop have an incredible polish to them. These ones, I'm going to need to pull it off. Obviously, you know, it's, it's eight years older, so you can see the frets are a little bit dirty. That's my fault. You know, don't blame the guitar here, but, you know, you can see the difference in the scallop depths there. Let me see if I can get a little bit higher. So up here, you know, very nice deep scallops. These are still plenty deep, you know, but they're not quite as deep as uh, the standard production model. So that's probably one of the bigger differences there. Let me get this set back up up here. Oops. And then we're gonna go to the body and the features of the electronics, etc. So back to the custom shop. So they have the same pickups you know, from the custom shop and from the production model. So that's not different. What is different though, is the electronics over here. So five-way switch, which is kind of cool because you get those in-between tones that you can't get on the standard production model. Some people like them, some people don't. This will get you there, right? And it's, it's a lot of extra money to get there. But if you want a five-way switch, obviously you can put one in your standard production model or you can buy, say, uh, one of the Japanese models, which also have five-way switches. Um, other than that, standard uh, speed volume pot here from YJM Duncan, uh, which is nice. But then, this is the big difference on all of his production models uh, going back to, what was that, 1998 when they switched over to the bigger headstock. Uh, they had the, the bypass right here when, it was at, when it's at 10. This one doesn't have that, so it's just a standard tone control, and so is this one. So that is one kind of big difference because when you get... To that 10 notch, um, it turns it up, it goes to 11, right? Because it bypasses. It's not a true bypass, but you get a little more output. You get a little bit more of the high end out of it, kind of making the pickup scream a little bit more. This one doesn't do that. So you get a little bit different tone. 
right? Has the same type of bridge, which is the traditional um, American style bridge with the six screws and the bent stat, uh, steel saddles, uh, three ply pit guard, all that stuff is pretty much all the same, right? So now let's look at the standard American uh, production model. So now talking electronics, this one, three-way switch. One, two, three, none of those in-between tones. So you can only select this one on its own, this one on its own, or this one on its own, which I don't mind that. You know, I don't really play too much of the in-between positions, but uh, sometimes it can be handy for different type of tones, right? Now from the volume pot, same thing, very fast, uh, the YJM Duncan um, speed pot there. And then this one has the bypass. So once you get to 10, it, it has like a, a notch that it locks into. I don't know if you can see it, it kind of drops down a little bit there. Drops down just a hair and it locks in to a bypass, which does give you a little bit of extra trouble and it does give you a little bit of extra um, uh, output. So a little bit more output, a little bit more trouble, right? Other than that, pickups are the same. It's got the three ply pick guard. You know, the back cover is the same. It has those same, you know, uh, flush strap locks, which are kind of cool. Let's check out some some of the gaps here on the on the body to the neck. So this is one thing that, you know, some people look at and some people don't. Let me see if I can get the best angle here. Right. So it's got a it's got a little bit of a gap there, which is kind of annoying, you know, considering these are like twenty three hundred dollars US dollars at this point. Right, so it's kind of like, man, look at that. You could land a plane in there. I mean, I'm exaggerating, obviously, but uh, it's it's kind of bigger than you might expect. Let's check out some of the grains up in the pocket here. Not quite as nice as the custom shop, right? But still, still kind of nice, you know? Just make sure you have somebody, like if you're looking at one of these, get some pictures of the grains to make sure you get some nice grain, right? There's no reason to settle. There's plenty of these out there, right? Now let's look at the body gap to the neck on the custom shop boom it still has a tiny tiny gap right but it's probably half the size of the other one so tighter neck pocket to a lot of folks will uh give you more sustain you know i don't know if that's an actual thing but a lot of people say that we didn't look at this side on the other one so let's check it out this is the u.s uh, standard production model that one actually looks pretty nice the gap right here and I mean, that's that's it for the most part, right? Do they sound different? Of course they sound different. They have different electronics. Do they sound different acoustically? Not dramatically. You know, I know some people point that out. And even Ingbe says, oh, if it if it's louder acoustically, it'll be louder, you know, once you plug it in. Um, I don't know. I don't really notice that much of a difference, right? Strings, electronics, those are going to make more of a difference in your sound. Um, I did a recent video comparing the maple board to the rosewood board. If you like uh, that type of content, please go check out that video uh, because those do sound a little bit different. The woods don't have a dramatic effect, but it's enough of an effect that you can you can hear it, right? It's feel, you know, it feels a little bit more mellow, etc. Uh, but that's really all I got for you guys today. Thank you for uh, watching. As always, if you like my content, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't be trying to blame me for your gas. All right, thank you.